Hi there, it's Vicki. So happy to see you on a Thursday rather than a Friday night. How are you guys doing? I will wait until, if you've watched before, there is a little bit of lag when I start talking before I actually go live live. So I just talked to myself for a few minutes. So it's what I'm doing right now is just talking to myself for a few minutes while I wait for my friends to be able to see me. Hello, Vibu crew and new friends. How are we doing? Trying to get cords out of the way. So thank you for joining me on a Thursday as opposed to our Friday Night Live. I am very happy that uh, somebody's here with me. I'm not here by myself, so always happy for a friend. Hi, Stacy, my uh, Tim Holtz specialist friend. Oh my goodness, if you don't know Stacy Hutchinson, you want to follow her. She makes beautiful, beautiful art uh, with, uh, I think you're part of his creative team or whatever, his group of makers. And uh, happy to see you here tonight. Hi, Laura. Hi, Denise. Robin. Lots of friends. Hi, Sherry and Susie. Um, and Kari. Kari's here. Hello, friends. Hello, Yaralise and Sarah. So happy to see you here tonight. So totally flipped the script. Tonight, I was going to get into making the watercolors from the shavings. And I'm saving it because magical things happened while I was playing with it. I just have to test them because I like to test it and make it. It's like testing a recipe before you share it with the world, right? So I'm waiting to test my creative recipe and I'm going to share it next week. But it's good. It's good. You're really going to like it. So I was playing away. I'm seeing who's here. Hello. Are the Robins here? At least one Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Lee. How are you? Glenda. So yes, I'm sure some of you are popping on here going, uh, it's not Friday, is it? No, it's not. It's Thursday. I have plans for a girls weekend with friends from high school. So um, one of my groups of friends from high school, we're going to Blue Mountain and I'm going to the spa. And if you've met me, I'm, I'm not really a spa girl, but we're going to do the Swedish Scandinavian something pools where they're like uh, heated pools and then you plunge in the cold pool and you do it all over again and she told me my hair was going to get wet and I'm like have you met me before I don't really do that because I don't have long beautiful flowing locks so she told me to pack a toque and if you're Canadian you know what I'm talking about a little beanie a toque is what we call it here so I'm doing that and then uh we have rented an Airbnb and we're going to get up to no good and mischief so um some of the pictures I'll share and we'll have to see how the rest of the weekend goes but with that happening, I won't be here tomorrow and totally forgot all about it because I literally live day to day and then looked at my calendar and went, oh, I actually better change that. So if you weren't aware, last week I did a deep dive into my friend Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils. I keep calling them crayons. Just ignore me. It's There's a lot in this brain, but the information is good. I'm just a dork, right? But um, there's three sets of the watercolor pencils. Uh, we did some fun stuff with gesso and art mediums last week with Resist, and it was good. And if you are newer to mixed media or you love mixed media, you're going to want to check out that video. I forgot to link it in the description uh, for today, but I will definitely link that one because this is a part de but it is standalone as well. So even if you didn't see last week's, you'll be completely fine. You will be able to play along tonight because magic is going to happen. And I prepped a piece of watercolor paper. I have some foundations paper. And if we get a chance, uh, we'll make a project using my new collection with American Crafts Print Shop. So it's a little bit of everything tonight. So let me go through and take a quick look at comments if you have a question before I flip the camera around because we're going to get right into it um, this week. So hello, Sarah Miller House, another one of my super talented friends. You have them all but haven't used them yet. Excited to see what I do. You'll like this, Sarah. This will be right up your rainbow loving alley. And you can use like I'm going to use some earthy tones tonight, but uh, you like my earrings. They're kind of like funky rainbow fall. So it's what I'm, I'm channeling. I went and got my hair cut tonight um, and uh, made a quick supper. 
some stuffed uh, spaghetti squash. It was delicious. And then came down here and started playing and went, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to share this. So uh, we're going to flip the camera, get right into it. Did I miss anything? Just watching tonight. Definitely. Tonight is really is a just watching kind of night, unless you're so inclined to play. But tonight is totally good to just watch, to see what I'm doing, and then take some notes. And then I really feel like the creative wheels are going to be turning and you're going to make some beautiful art out of this. So question, are the new mixed media pads not a true 12? Uh, yes, they are not exactly 12 by 12. But I think if you measure the last ones, they were not exactly 12 by 12. Um, somebody told me about this because it went on while I was away and I couldn't access uh, Facebook while I was on the cruise ship. Other people could, my Wi-Fi wouldn't work. They are, I, it is one of those things that hopefully we can correct moving down the, um, down the road. But at the end of the day, I probably cut my cardstock wrong when I cut the barcode off and it's not true 12 by 12 either. They'll still fit your page protectors. It will be fine. I haven't even measured it because for me, for some of you, I'm not dismissing that this could be a huge concern. For me, I'll still use them anyway. Most of the stuff I end up matting on cardstock anyway, but there could possibly be, I haven't even measured it. We are working on my next collection, actually working on my next Christmas collection now. So there won't be a ready-made probably for two more collections, but I will make sure when we do that, that they are aware because they probably aren't even aware. It's not one of those things like it's, I think like a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch off. It will still work just fine. The papers in that pad, let me grab it because it's right here because I'm super organized. I clean my whole studio. Um, uh, Where is it? Because I just told you I'm organized. Let's see how organized I am. If you're like, what? What are they talking about? It's this pad where it's all my original art that's created in a lovely pad so there were some concerns that it's not exactly 12 by 12. i will check it out later it could be the case but like i said i don't think it'll stop you from using it um, if you have an issue i'm only the designer not the manufacturer so definitely american crafts will take care of you so just get in touch with american crafts customer service and they will happily do that but once it leaves my brain and then is produced by American Crafts. All that's on it is my name. But at the end, um, any issues you have, American Crafts is really good with their customer service. So definitely check it out. But I have tons of papers that are true 12 by 12. Has anybody else come across that? I have pattern paper, card stocks often that aren't. You still, I think, can use it. And if you aren't happy with it, then definitely take it up with American Crafts and they will take care of you, my friends. So. Yes, that is something I had heard about, but yeah, I wasn't 100% sure. I haven't even had a chance to measure it. So that is all I have to say about that. But uh, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. And now let's talk about what we're going to do tonight. So I have these lovely, I'm, I have two cameras, so just watercolor, distress watercolor pencils. So we talked about painting with them last week we oh this is probably look at look at this magic that happened so here i gotta tell you something that's coming because once like i leave you guys even after the stuff that we've done i will still play and make stuff and we did where I, we swatched them i swatched them on watercolor paper i swatched them on foundations paper um i did it by color or what at least what vicky thought was like color range. Uh, this is not how they come in the container, but it's how my brain would work. And then I also swatch them on different papers, my favorite papers to use. And I swatch them um, what they look like straight out of the pack. It's all sitting beside me because I haven't done anything with it since last week because I was working on layouts for three scrapbook chicks. So let me tell you, if you guys are doing that event, three scrapbook chicks. I'm doing a layout class. Guess how many layouts I did with the kit that you guys are going to get if you're doing that? Seven. I did seven pages. So two uh, double page and or three maybe double page. I don't it, it's a lot. So just so you know, it's how I roll. 
right? I just, if uh, the product's there, I just keep working on it. There's no way we'll finish them all in the class, but you have full instructions to do it. And then next I have to finish for the Vicky, we Vicky, Vicky Wheaton, whoever that is, Vicky Booten, um, Lollapalooza weekend using Evergreen and Holly. I've only started the album. I figure we'll do at least 10 layouts for that one too. And I still have kits for that. And then print shop, which I haven't even started. So, so much magic's coming down the pipeline, but look at swatch these. First thing you should do with any new medium is swatch it. So you have a reference and you can color match. We didn't even look at it with actual distress ink yet. I'm really just hyper-focused just on what the pencils do. And then we'll do lots of other things with it. So did all those things. And then we got into, <laughs> I'm finding stuff and then getting excited talking and, and mixing it up. So just give me a minute. And then we did some resist and some gesso. Like this is the watercolor pencils with gesso. So I gessoed the hearts and then colored around them. And here's what the magic is. So Vicky, why? why? Why would I want the pencils? And I'll tell you why. My major thing is control. And that two major things. Control. I really can control how I use them because it's in a pencil. And I love that. And it's water soluble and water reactive, like all of the magic that is distress um, in Tim Holtz. Like it's why I love the guy and love the product. And it matches my distress collection, the whole world of the distress. So that's why if you're like, I think you only need those two reasons. So why do I love them? Water soluble. I can use them for tons of different techniques and they match my whole world of distress. So I love that. And then look at. We did resist and then added another color. So we actually lifted color. And then I went back in with the red for these. So lots of stuff happened. You'll want to check out last week's live, which is on YouTube and on um, Facebook. So whatever platform you like to watch on. And you will find, I think I was on there for three hours just playing away. So tonight, and there's another thing that's coming but my mink died. I'm going to show you something with my mink. So tonight I was messing around like I do and flip the script. We were going to do the watercolor, making uh, the shavings into a watercolor palette, but I'm saving it because it needs to be a whole Friday night live of its own. When I show you magic, it really is chemistry that I did with it. I'm going to share some of those things. I will share it early so you can order some of the things that I used because there are some additives that I find are super helpful when you're making the watercolor. And we'll be talking about those next week. Okay. Tonight, look at this. So I made tinted texture paste. This is peeled paint texture paste. We're going to do that tonight. So little lessons that you're going to learn which i have found in my whole history of mixing and playing with pigments that they don't always play nicely when you mix them and pinks and reds are really hard super hard pigments um when you mix them can totally change color do you guys remember back in the day when i had that little watercolor set the little tubes of watercolor and the pink when you mix with things would go neon it would totally change color so I found a little bit with the um, picked raspberry that I love the color, but it isn't necessarily a true picked raspberry. It looks a little bit more like worn lipstick. And this is with my iridescent texture paste. So we're going to do all of this tonight, right? Yeah, what's the new color? What are our guesses? I cannot wait. Stacy knows already, but she can't tell us. She will know already, but... Um, what would my hopes and desires be? And do you think it'll match seasonally at all? Do you think it'll match because like it's Chris around Christmas time? Uh, do you think it's going to be in the blue family? Do you think it's going to be in the green? Uh, the reds or pinks, orange, maybe we're going to get that peach that my friend Shamel has been waiting for. And I'd be on board with that. I also want a true Navy, like a dark black Navy, like really dark Navy. That would be a wish list. And you know what I want? Like a total Barbie pink. Like the, the most awesome, brightest pink that doesn't pull the purples. That would be my wish. So you guys think green? Uh, what could it be? Stacy knows, Stacy. You should let me know. You should send me a, 
a text with a little peek at that because I hate waiting, but it, whatever it is, I'll want it and I'll buy it and all of the things, but I need the barbiest pink. I do. I would like that. Uh, you know, Heidi got to put a request in. I feel like Vicki Booten wants to put a request in for a pink, but I know pinks are hard. Look in acrylic paint. You do not have a huge choice of pink. There might be like two or three shades. Pink is a hard pigment. So yes, please to a navy. Do you not agree? Like a oh, a new red? I would take a new red. I will take anything. The only thing that won't make me do a happy, happy dance is like a brown because I'm Vicky and it's not my jam. But will I buy it and love it for tree trunks and wood grain? 100%. But would I totally support my friend Tim because he would love a new brown? Totally. So I can't wait to see. But look what's going to happen. We're going to use every last bit of what we make tonight to do the thing. So what do you need to get started? I am going to use Distress Texture Paste in matte. See that? I'm going to use this. I'm going to use, if you have it, Vicky Boot and Creative Effects Iridescent Glaze. I am going to use my Distress Watercolor pencils, right? I, you need a pencil sharpener, palette knife, a craft mat to blend on, or you can use your glass mat, whatever you have. I have a brayer, I have watercolor paper, and I have foundations paper. So you will need those things. You already ordered it, Deborah, sight unseen. I have to get in touch with my uh, friend, Tim, and he usually sends me a box or my friends at Ranger do, so I have to see, but I usually order it too, because it's how I roll. But um, I will be very excited. Whatever color it is, I will be happy. So uh, Natalie is saying, I saw Vicky's Evergreen and Holly album for the class last, last weekend, and it's gorgeous. Thank you, Natalie. I love our weekend events together. If you enjoy this and you love paper crafting or you've been out of it for a while, definitely go to VickyBooten.com and check out a couple of my class kits if you want to spend the weekend. You get everything you need except for your basic tools to make a 50 plus page album. You get the album, everything that you need for it, everything you need to make 10, at least 10 layouts and we do cards and you still have lots extra. So check that out at vickybooten.com. They are, we're kidding. We, we're, the card stock is arriving next week. They should be shipping, I would say in two and a half weeks. I figure right at the beginning of November is what I predicted. And I feel like that's what's going to happen. So let's flip the camera and do the things. I talked for 17 minutes. Seriously, Vicky. What is wrong with you, girlfriend? Okay, here I am. Okay, got my mediums. I have, I'm using, I think this is set one. Set one, just because it's what I have out here. I have ordered the Prismacolor pencil crayon that Tim recommends. Um, it hasn't come yet. So I'm just using the pencil crayon I have, which, right, what is the best um, pencil crayon, pencil sharpener I have? What is the best tool? The one you have handy, right? I have a mister and a paintbrush as well. In case, just in case. I have my art wedge. I might need, use that. I'm going to grab a couple different palette knives. Okay. Let's do the things. Question. I don't have your iridescent paste, but I have Shimmer's Goddess from uh, Try It. Try It, Ada. I don't see why it wouldn't work, right? I'm very happy to hear that, Denise. Denise said the anti-card girl broke down and made a card. I have to find a spot to put my laptop so I can see your comments. So sorry if the camera's jiggling for one sec. But right, I just do this in my basement. It is not a full-on studio setup. So thank you for your patience while I get my act together. Okay, um, palette knife. I had washed mine, so let me grab it. Okay, a couple different ones. Let's do the things. The other thing you might find handy is a scrap piece of paper for your shavings. It's nice to be able to control what you're using. What exactly is a pencil crayon? Uh, well, I am Canadian, so depending where you're from, you may call it, call it a colored pencil. Vicki Booten is Canadian, and I call it a, um, I call it a <laughs> pencil crayon. 
right? And I'm sure it's the French. When is the tag class, please? You haven't missed it. Guess what, Anne? I will be announcing it. I am going to do it. Help me with the calendar, Natalie. I believe it's Sunday, October the 30th. I am going to be doing a free class using the Sweet Rush tag book and some ephemera. Um, if I have my package handy, do you want me to show you quickly? Let me show you quickly. And I have a couple of these kits left. If you want to partake, the class is free. I have it here somewhere. Remember, Natalie, when you were here, I showed you. But now... I thought it was going to be easy because it was sitting there organized and now I moved it. But it is the ephemera pack. It's, I believe, a six by eight paper pad. If you go on vickybooten.com, it's listed. You can see everything I'm going to be using in that class. But it's going to be Sunday. I have not picked a time. Yes, it's Sunday right before Halloween. And um, there's no sneak peek because I literally make it with you and live. I don't make it ahead of time. I plan a few things and I make it 100% live with you on Sunday. But if you go on vickybooten.com and look at the kits uh, in my shop, you will see the Sweet Rush Tag Book Kit, right? Yeah, You're, I'm surprised you let Natalie leave. She's good, we're good. I am not, uh, I can reach her in Toronto, so she is awesome. So. Yeah, on October 30th, and we'll add the event on vickybooten.com. So we are working on, as well, a calendar on vickybooten.com on the blog section. So you guys can see where I will be, things that are coming down the pipeline. We have a lot of amazing organized plans for uh, the new year and even leading into December. Because when we do this whole album class... So I haven't talked a lot about it. I am a terrible promoter of my classes, but this is Evergreen and Holly. We are going to make this entire album. So this whole thing, I have not embellished it. This literally is just the paper cutting and all of the um, interactive bits. So I am going to make this with you guys on the first weekend of December. And I'm also going to have posted in November photo prompts. And I'm going to be taking and talking about a photo per day, and I'm gonna add it to my album. So I will have a completed album with photos by the end of the year. I'm going to do it, and every day I'm gonna post the page I'm working on with the photo, my journaling, all, like look it, it's all gonna be planned out. I might even in here write out exactly what my photo of the day is going to be for December. So this will be awesome. This will be awesome, right? Um, I just, you just did the Fernwood tag book and loved it. Yeah, it, the tag books are fun and we haven't made a new one, right? So Sweet Rush was the last one um, for a bit. We'll probably bring them back again, but definitely if you bought the Sweet Rush tag book, the 30th, we will be adding it. I will be sending out a newsletter uh, updating you guys next week. So just be prepared for that. If you are not signed up for my newsletter, you can do that on vickybooten.com as well. It's going to be good. We have lots of stuff coming up, right? You love the idea of photo prompts. Me too. Oh, just a second. I have the volume is on my phone because I was trying to do stuff. I don't want to hang up on you guys. Just a sec. I think, yes, let me put it on. Silent, I think. There. Can you guys still hear me? I didn't ruin anything, did I? Um, okay, do the things tonight. I'm so excited. So I was watching Tim and doing all of the magic that he does when these uh, pencils first came out, right? And um, then I like to figure out what they are, best ways to use them. And then I like to play with them and figure out how I'm going to use them. So when I add them to my creative toolbox, that how will they work for me? Because it's one of those things I've heard, and this always makes me laugh, or they'll be like, oh, I watched Tim Holtz, but it's not really my thing because I don't like distress or brown. And I'm like, and you don't have to. That's Tim's jam. But look at all of the people who use distress, me included, who is totally, I'm rainbow and butterflies. But that man 
is a master educator and marketer. He will tell you exactly how to use all of his products and then you can decide how it fits in your toolbox. So don't poo poo the distress. It's the best thing. Um, and tonight we're gonna use a pencil crayon, pardon me, colored pencil, the watercolor pencil. And we're gonna use the shavings and we're gonna mix it into the texture paste and we're gonna make some pretty things. So like I said, I'm getting this ready. I have a stencil ready, which I'm just using this heart one because it's what we used last week from my print shop. Uh, my stencil sets come with three stencils in a pack. They're super inexpensive. It's a great value. And each collection comes with two sets. So six stencils per collection. I'm going to use this. I can zoom in a bit, but I have to do it manually because it's just my phone, right? It's not like a big fancy setup. But here, let's do it. This will be my zoom in. Is that better? Sorry, you got to look at my big sausage arms. There. Is that better? I can do anything that you ask me. Well, most anything. And I'm going to take out a piece of my foundations paper, which is a really heavyweight, um, bright white, smooth art paper. And I'm going to use that as well. Okay. I hope that helps because I know I forget. And for some of this kind of minute stuff, you have to see a little bit better, right? It's the other thing I'm going to work on. I want a proper overhead camera and I'm going to move my where I film to the other end of my room so that uh, I can zoom in and do all of the things. So it will be coming, my friends, in the new year. That's why I have to stay home for five minutes so I can get stuff done. So see, I threw that on the floor <laughs> and I have my foundations paper. I have my piece of you just saw me with it, watercolor paper and a stencil, okay? And thank you, Susie, saying, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, that you give the video a thumbs up and that you're already following me on, uh, if you watch on Facebook or on YouTube, so you don't miss when I go live. I've been trying to plan them and put them up a little bit ahead of time. My goal when I was talking to my friend Natalie is to have them all posted and let you guys know um, at least on the Monday before. And I actually want to start uh, scheduling my lives a couple months in advance so you guys could get what you need way ahead of time, right? Just a little out of focus. Uh, I think it's on fo It's in focus on my computer. So just go over the gear in your bottom uh, right-hand corner and just make sure you are on 720p. Uh, and we'll make sure uh, that that is better. But on my screen, it's in focus, so I'm not sure. Okay. A little blurred. Is it blurred for everybody? Don't forget, it's on my iPhone. So you guys will get the gist of what we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to go in with peeled paint because I think that this will show up nicely on screen. Now it does have, these are pure pigment. It's a stick of pigment that looks like a pencil, but it's actually not. It's all pigment. The other thing that's magic about these uh, uh, Distress Watercolor pencils is they're heavily pigmented. It isn't just a stick of pigment, but it is a little will go a long way. So when you're doing this, just make sure you don't uh, overdo it. You don't need a ton of shavings. So I am right now just sharpening these right? So I can use the shavings as a actual loose pigment to tint my texture paste. And the other magic is then if you want, like, look at that sharp tip. So if I want to do different techniques with these, I totally can. So it, the material is, or the medium is not soft. It's actually rather hard, but not super hard. It's just kind of magically in between. So loving them. I'm loving them so far and figuring out lots of different ways to use them. So I'm going to now take the shavings I just created and take the paper out because I didn't peel it off. I can just take that out when I don't want it. Throw it in my garbage can. If you had tweezers, there's a little bit of pink in there. <laughs> it's how Vicky rolls because I was using the picked raspberry earlier, but it's okay. I'm not worried about it. Boop. 
Okay, a little bit of pigment. So see, there are shavings that I've created by um, sharpening my peeled paint. You can use whatever color you want if you're doing this along with me. Peeled paint, distress watercolor pencil. I'm going to take this now and I thought, let's use distress texture paste in the mat because I feel this is, you can find this easily. Like this is a medium that I will put my share of sale link. So thank you for the support. If you click on any of my links when you're shopping uh, and search whatever you're shopping for, it is just a little bit that helps me, but costs you nothing. So I did put a couple of share sales up there, but then remember, change my mind what we're doing tonight. So I didn't add the texture paste yet, but um, it is distress texture paste in matte. And I'm going to mix this in here and we're going to create an awesome tinted texture paste. So you do not need a lot. A little goes a long way. So I think that kind of yummy little blob is perfect. I'm going to tell you something. You could put the this pigment right in there, and I just put it right on top. Look at that little. Looks like some chives. I put some chives on my sour cream. Now, when you do this, you could just start blending and it would work. But I find adding a little bit of water to start my pigment flowing around. So a couple squirts makes blending the pigment a little bit easier, right? So look at, before I really start, I'm gonna mush that in and start dissolving those shavings. So I don't have big, look like pieces of green, you know, grated lime in it. So look at that. Do you see? Look at the magic already, friends. Look at. So when you go in, keep it all nice and tight. Keep picking it up, bringing it back into the center, and you're going to blend this. Now, I'm good at this because I worked in the dental field, and I would have had to do this to cement your crown. <laughs> when I was a chairside a dental assistant, before I moved on to different things in the dental office, um, the dentist I worked for, Dr. Sherry Hill, would have handed me the crown and I would have went like this and I would have mixed your cement and then we would have put it in the crown and we would have seeded that crown. And so what you want to remember so it doesn't dry out on you is keep it contained into a nice tight little blob and mix tight. Don't spread it all out because air is going to hit it and you're gonna dry your medium. But oh my goodness, friends, do you see that already? Look what I made. I just tinted my own freaking texture paste to match peeled paint. Now it's a little bit light. If I wanted it darker, what would I do? Add more shavings, okay? So now I'm gonna pick this all up off of a said and leave a little, okay? Now my um, palette knife is loaded on the back because that's how I will get it off easiest for when I want to put it through my stencil. But I'm also leaving a little because we do a couple different things in the world of Vicki Booten. So I am going to take my watercolor. No, I'm going to do this on foundations. The first thing I'm going to do is on foundations. So see, here's my foundations paper. You guys can see I'm going to move this over so you guys can see. Now you could use some kind of blending brush. You know I love my stencil brushes because they wash up nice and easy, right? I have my stencil placed and I have created a texture paste that would go on in texture or I can also put a little bit of water on my stencil brush and then I could also blend into the texture paste to use it almost like a gesso. This is gonna be almost like a gesso. I'm really getting it into the bristles so it's not chunky. And here's another thing I can do. Oh my goodness. It's almost like I also made dist distress um, ink in that color again, going in with my peeled paint. Look at that. So look at that, my friends. just did that and used it like that. So I'm going to build a background. I'm going to put it down here too. Like this is not a repositionable stencil, but look, if I went in full on thick and loaded it up like that, it's going to go under your stencil. 
That's why we cheat and put a little bit of water to just make it move around a little bit better. Okay, I don't want big gobs. But if you want big gobs, nobody's judging you. Use your big gobs of color. The drier it is, um, it sets up faster. So it also creates a really kind of fun technique. Okay. Right? So now, see if that bothers you. You can also kind of blend the lines out. Right? So I let it set up a bit, and then I could come in with any blending brush and just kind of soften my lines. Nothing bothers me. I couldn't care less, to be honest with you. It's mixed media. I'm just doing it. It works just fine. So I'm going to place my stencil again now and add texture to that smooth layer with this yummy deliciousness that almost looks like wasabi. We created wasabi. And I'm going to just put a layer down like this. So I place and I pick up. I position and I pick up. Okay. So now I have some flat open areas where we went through on the stencil brush. Lift. And then I have these textural areas that are totally 3D and awesome. And then I can go and I'm going to place this again. Now, this is tricky, friends. So you might want the first layer to dry, but you know I have zero patience. So I'm going to do it just so I can continue it down my page. Okay. There we go. And now that is ready for a layout card altered item whatever you want to do you could let it dry and you could ink around it if you wanted to as well setting this aside and i'm going to show you where we don't waste so i'm going to cheat and put a little bit more here just on my so imagine you're really heavy-handed and you still have tons of medium left on your stencil okay this is my dirty stencil i'm going to wipe my craft mat up so I can put my watercolor paper down. And I want to show you this. This is just one of my favorite things. Uh, Vicky is a non-waster of the medium. Because a lot of people, you go in here now, right? With your paper towel, you clean that up. Well, that's not what we're going to do, my friends. We are not going to waste. We're always going to have scraps and things ready so we can put it on something else. And this is watercolor paper. So it will tolerate a lot of wetness. So you can do two things. You could go in here, just wet the stencil, put it down, or let's see what happens when I also float it into water. Watercolor paper, cold press, just Canson or something I bought in an art supply store. I have misted the dirty stencil. You gotta move pretty quick, right? Because you still want your medium to be wet. I am gonna put this down like that. Oh yeah. And get a paper towel. So my paper towel is just so I can go and brayer. I want to add some pressure to get as much pigment off as possible. You could have sandwiched another piece of watercolor paper and you would have got double the pattern. Okay. So now I have my brayer and I'm going to get second, even third generation off of what was on here. And you're going to find as you play, it depends um, or what will affect your result is how much water you put in here. So if I lift this right now and I don't have too much going on, I'm not going to lift it right off. I just want to look. I just got my fingernails done and it makes it hard. Oh, very pretty. I'm going to make it wetter because this is watercolor paper. I totally can. So I am just going to mist a little bit more on here. And now I'm not even going to put the sheet of paper on. I'm just going to brayer that and push that medium around a bit. And let's see what we get. Now, if you've watched me, I do this stencil stamping all of the time. You could totally go in and float a second color in there if you wanted in the open spaces. For this one, I want just the white, the contrast of the white and the peeled paint. But um, let's just take a look. I'm going to dry it up a little bit and see what we got. Again, oh, I love it. Stencil is almost completely clean, so I'm not really going to get a third generation off this, so let's just wipe it off. The other thing I want to tell you about these um, 
Distress watercolor pencils. There's tons of pigment and they stain. Some of them really stain. So be very careful what you're putting them on. I was uh, used one of the purples and got it on my desk, like my proper desk, and it is completely stained. So it's not that it's a problem. I'll figure out something to get the stain off, but you're going to want to be careful when you're using them. Like if you're using it on grandma's dining room table, lay your craft mats down. I'm going to just float a little bit of water in there just to see if we can get that pigment to move a little bit more because I kind of really love because it's on watercolor paper the softness of that. We could even go in and brayer it a bit and see if we can't press some more pigment out. But I think it's pretty much in the fibers of the paper. So Vicki, you're not gonna get much out of that. I tried Gooby Gone, Gooby Gone did not move it. So I think I might have to get my magic eraser out and see if I can't fix it. So I'm just giving this a little bit of water, taking a little bit of the extra. But look at if the other um, technique wasn't your jam, look how pretty and soft this is. And it totally looks like peeled paint, doesn't it? I'm going to try the magic eraser, Stacy. But I just want, you know, it's one of those friend share. And I want you to know that, just be careful, it stained even my craft mat. Like the one underneath. And I am a little crazy. I like to keep my stuff clean. So for me, I know that that bothers me a little bit, but I'll be okay. Okay, so I'm just taking a little moisture out. I'm not gonna bake it like a cookie. I just don't want it soaking wet. But look how pretty that is, friends. So I use, I think, the back side inadvertently. This is what happened on the front side with a little bit more of the medium on the stencil. So this is the first one I did, right? And then that's the one that we just did now. So from that, right, we got that. And we got that by making your own texture paste with, if you're just joining me, I use Mr. Holtz and Ranger's Distress Texture Paste Matte Medium with shavings from my peeled paint, Distress Watercolor Peeled Paint Pencil. A little bit of water and look at that. I like to find ways to make my mediums go really far. So this is just one thing. But you know I have this habit of teaching you or showing you 50 million things in one video. Tonight we're keeping it just this. We're only going to do this because I'm trying I'm trying to, to be smarter. Okay, not smarter, but not uh, make it where it's overwhelming with information, right? You could try with gesso. Yeah, we used gesso last week, TJ, and it totally will work. Any kind of texture medium that is water-based and not oil, I say give it a try, right? If you ask me, will it work? I say, well, let's see. Give it a try, right? Depends on how heavy body your gesso is, but I don't see any reason. I'm cleaning my um, pencil sharpener out, so let's go. What color would you like me to use? Do you want me to show you this one? I would like to. I, I ask and I'm going to do what I want anyway because that's what everybody says. So this was with picked raspberry. And the reason I'd like to try another color is, remember, like it is not the same color at all, right? Like picked raspberry is a much uh, richer pink. And this one came out very watermelony, right? So I would like to see what will happen with a different pigment. I really believe it's because it's a pink and pinks are finicky, finicky, finicky uh, pigments. So why, this is my thought process of why I would like to do it with a different color is I wanna see if this happens with a different shade of um, distressed watercolor pencil. Will it change? Is it the medium that's making it change or is it the pigment that changed when it went into the medium so we're gonna i'm gonna try it we're gonna see maybe we can even do like multiple color one i'll just find colors that will work together i just open a brand new bottle of um iridescent glaze because this one is getting a little heavier it's old and it's starting to dry up a bit found it 
So this is a Vicky Booten product. I still have it in my store at VickyBooten.com. You can find it online, but American Crafts has discontinued this product. But because I know a lot of you guys, if you're part of the Vibu crew, have purchased it. So I'm going to keep using it for a while, right, to show you all the things you can do with it. So let me grab foundations that I threw on the floor, remember? And let's do it. I'm not going to do this on watercolor. We're going to do all of it. Same kind of steps, but we'll do it on two sheets of foundations paper. Is the paste like white paint so it turns it a pastel? Um, well, the paste is white, right? But here's the other thing, my friend. By the C, 760. The Distress watercolor pencils are not completely transparent. They have some opacity like a gouache does. So um, even though we're using it in a white medium, which will make it like what you just saw me use, see, it, it made it chalky, but the pigment load is still very vibrant. So it didn't make it a pastel because there's tons of pigment in these in these pencils. So that's where I'm saying and why I think it's a great purchase is there's it's going to go a long way. These pencils will go a long way. But with that being said is it won't like look how dark that is. And that just meant this one had more shavings in it than this did. Oh, look at this is a great side by side, isn't it? Exact same product just had more pigment ratio to texture paste. So I got it light, which almost looks um, like, sh uh, I just forgot. Uh, what is the green? Help me, Stacy. Um, peeled paint and shabby shutters. Almost looks shabby shutters, right? But it is the exact same pigment. Just this one has more shavings. This one has less, right? You can mix them with any medium. This is what this is what I want you guys to get 100% on board with, is that you're like, I love these. I bought the Distress Watercolor pencils because everybody told me I needed them. But instead of like my other mediums, I'm not gonna just let them sit there. I'm gonna grab all the different mediums I have and I'm going to swatch them out mixing them and write down exactly what it is. Distress Watercolor pencil in peeled paint with gesso with um, matte acrylic glaze, with one of your tonic mediums. This is where the magic completely happens. Magic completely happens. So let's go and mix it. I don't have to stay with set one. Do you want me to try another red and see what happens? Let's see what happens when I mix another one of the warm family, if the pigment's gonna change. So are we okay with candied apple? if I shave candied apple. The other thing is, think about pigment load and how dark they are. So if I mix tattered rose as compared to candied apple, I might need more shavings to get any kind of pigment with something like the um, tattered rose because it's so light, right? So this is where the magic happens is literally through practice and play. This is how you figure all this stuff out. All these questions you're asking are amazing questions. And my answer would be to you, try it. I can't wait. Let me know what happens, right? And if you've been following me for a long time, which I've been doing mixed media for, for freaking ever, before I had my own product line, I used to teach full day distress classes with just distress ink. Oxide wasn't even out. We would literally just have pads and I would teach five hour classes with techniques just using a pad of ink. So let me tell you, friends. Everything that I've learned is literally through just having the attitude of I don't care. Let's just try it. It's my paper and my time. That's where all the learning happens. So do the things. OK, do you like that lecture? Did you like that? It's not a lecture. It's literally like try it. Oh my goodness. And let me know what happens. Let me know if you want me to share it on a video or say you're scared to try it. Let me know. Put it in the comments of the regular when this video is no longer live and it's just a regular comments under YouTube. Put it in the comments like things you'd like to see me try. 
and I will 100% will do it live for you on one of these lives. Okay, I'm going to go in with candied apple. So again, I'm just going to get some shavings. And because this medium is rather hard, it, sh it um, sharpens pretty much like a colored pencil or pencil crayon. So see, now I have a nice tip and I can draw. So if I was in my art journal, I could totally do like different patterns or I could add water in their watercolor. Okay, so let's see what happens with the shavings that I just created, which really is almost like a loose pigment. We're creating a loose pigment that we can then add to a different medium to tint it. Will it work really awesome with everything? No, but these ones, why I love, because it's a dry, stable medium, so I'm not adding moisture to what's already existing, other than that little blast of water that I put in there, and we create magic. So we're gonna use Vicki Booten's Crushed Happy Unicorn Tears, also known as Iridescent Glaze. This is diamond and sparkle like you wouldn't even believe. It's absolutely amazing. And I love it and I want to use it. So we're going to. So look at, oh, you almost want to eat it, but don't do it because I can't guarantee you won't grow a third eye. So again, I'm going to put a little dollop of it. A dollop of it. Don't eat it. It's yummy, but it's not food. And this sharpener is just a cheap one. It's because the medium is really good, right? So let's go on. This is, again, Candied Apple is the Distress Watercolor pencil that I'm using is Candied Apple. Okay. Going to put it in Vicki Booten's Iridescent Texture Medium because now we're going to make sparkle texture paste. I'm going to put just a couple little drips of water just to get the medium to start dissolving. And then we're going to take a palette knife. Where's my palette knife? And I'm just kind of, oh yeah, look at that. I didn't need anywhere near that water. That really, each one of these mediums are going to react differently. I might even put a little bit more of the glaze down. Oh my, it is yummy, yummy, yummy. So it definitely with the iridescent glaze goes more um, pastel, but if we want it darker, what would we do? Add more pigment, okay? Do you like that I ask you the question and then answer it? So let's show you, okay? Let's swatch this on something. On something, okay? Swatch it on something. Okay. Oh, see, sparkly deliciousness. Let's sharpen a little bit more crayon and see if we can darken it up a bit. Let's see what happens. It is so pretty. I love it. And you know, because this is where I vicify it, right? Like Tim will say, like, and if you're Vicky Booten, this is a color palette you would use. Or I love iridescent and shiny. Like it's totally my jam, right? So you do you. Do what works for you, right? So I just put more shavings in here. Let's see what happens. Will I get a really dark texture paste? I don't know, but we'll try. But this is what I'm saying. When you don't add water, it means you have to blend it out more. And it definitely darkened up quite a bit more. But now there's chunkies in here, right? So you just got to add a little bit of pressure. So you're pushing the, the moisture from the paste into your shavings to blend them out. But this medium blends beautifully. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. It looks like candy hearts or a candy apple. <laughs> just like the color says, it's delicious. I love this for Christmas for our Christmas crafting is magic, right? So yeah, you have different, like, obviously I'm using the one that has my name on it, but like I said, it's not necessarily readily available. I do have it on vickybooten.com and I will link it. 
um, to anywhere else online that has it. But look at, let's pull all that in now so we can get as much of it off as possible, right? So we can pull it through our stencil. Woo! It's a little thinner than the, or uh, more, less viscous, resist a flow than the texture paste was. So let me show you all of the magic. Are you ready? Question. If you sharpen the pencil but don't want to use right away, could you store it for later? 100%. It's a, a dry, stable medium, Karen. Great question. 100% yes. Okay. So let's show you with a stencil brush again. Let me make sure this is clean and there's no green on it. Because then you'll be like, where'd that color come from? And I'll be like, it came from my dirty brush. So all I'm doing is putting some water on my paper towel and then just cleaning the end of my stencil brush out. So for you guys that ordered stencil brushes and you're like, why has she not shipped it yet? Um, I was waiting for my order of cardstock, which there is a massive worldwide paper shortage and cardstock has been a nightmare to get. It's finally shipping. So good news, it's shipping, but the stencil brushes were in that order. They should be here in a week and I will start shipping it as soon as they arrive. So if you want some new Vicky Booten stencil brushes, which I love, cause see, it's great for using with these kind of mediums. They are going to be in stock at vickybooten.com. You can also find them in other stores. They have them, okay? So look at, let's see what this looks like as a glittery um, flat medium. So using it right where uh, it is not a texture paste, but we still want that sparkle. We can totally do it like this, right? Through our stencil. And now we have a sparkly flat medium, which is hard to see maybe on camera, but it does have iridescent shine. And look at that color. Look what we just made. And I'm gonna do it twice like we did before or around this page a little bit, okay? I'm just gonna, like I'm building for a background, okay? One blast of water, just so the medium isn't super thick on my brush. Put some in here. And before I lift this up, I'm gonna also put some texture on here. So now I'm gonna load with the texture paste so we can have some areas that are really dark and thick and pigmented and textural with texture paste. And then we have some areas that are really light with the um, medium or with the uh, stencil bits. Okay, look at that. So we just created this beautiful red iridescent texture paste. Look at that. So when this dries, it's totally sparkly. The more of the shavings you put, I think the less sparkle you'll have because the pigment, I think, because it's kind of opaque, is going to um, take some of the sparkle away, okay? Because look at, look how much pigment is in that. I got setting it aside to dry. This one has a lot less and it's way shinier. So again, you decide what you want to do. So things, because we're not going to waste, right? Well, I don't want to waste this. So let's do our stencil stamping, second generation. Let's mist. And I'm misting right over my medium because I'm really not. It's red. There is so much pigment in here. We can get a couple of applications in this. So then you just decide where you want to use that. Again, I'm going to put paper towel down so it doesn't bleed out. And sorry, with it being red, that is definitely a thing but right if I would have sandwiched it with a second piece of paper I could have made a oh look at that pattern right um and then we can lift it and let's stamp it and do it again so we create a whole background here oh my gosh I love this I love it so much I can't even tell you so let's do a third generation of this and stamp that down So you're like, Vicki, why are you getting so much more out of it comparatively to when we use the uh, Distress Texture Paste? Different mediums, different results. 
right? Different mediums, different results. So I added a little bit more water. Sorry, it's off screen. I have limited space because I moved the camera down, right? So let's do this. Okay, for the reveal. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. So look it, I could probably get one more. And every time I do it, I'm going to get a different result. Let's see what happens. If I add some water, oh my goodness, that pigment is just going to run. Love it. Okay. So setting the side aside to dry, I will give it a blast with a heat gun when it, it dries up a little bit and I'll show you the end result. Let's keep going because we have medium. Oh, I love that so much. I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. Okay, I'm going to do two more. Two more. Okay, here is my foundations paper. Again, it's your friend. I love this stuff. So I have my dirty stencil watch. Remember, I told you the stains and now I'm getting it everywhere. I think it should be okay though because it's pretty diluted. Yes, it is. So I don't care how messy this is. I'm, I'm doing a kind of messier background. So I am going to go in and I'm going to mist. I'm going to put some water on my background with my empty misters. Okay. So I'm kissing down this one that was kind of dirty. And I'm going to take what's left on my palette knife. Oh, and let's see what we get when there's already water on your background. Now, of course, we're using red, so it, it can look kind of like a crime scene, but um, it is okay because it's hearts, right? So maybe for Halloween, friends, this is kind of like a, you know, my bloody Valentine. <laughs> and I'm all right, right? With this being a little bit messy. And then let's lift, and we're going to let that one. Oh, I freaking love it. Okay, look at it. It's so pretty. So I will totally let this just sit. Oh, there's so much pigment. And now with the, this product is so good. I, I have to try to get American Crafts to bring it out again. There are lots of these mediums out there. This one is special. This one and the gold glaze. If you see them, you want to scoop them up because they're super inexpensive and they are like, they're magical. But look at, there's another application just with what I'm using here, right? Let's grab one more sheet of foundations paper. Where did you put it? Here it is. Because now, let's see. You're going to laugh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. So look at that mess that's on my background. I'm going to press my paper into this and see what I get. Let's do it. You could throw glitter on anything, Marcia, and we could be the best of friends. I would throw glitter on everything. And oh my goodness, Irene, look at that. Look at that. That was when we rolled through. Look at the pattern I made. So if you would have sandwiched between two sheets of foundations paper, do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to, it's going to be kind of messy here for a minute, but let's do it. Oh my goodness. It's so much fun. So much fun. So I'm grabbing two sheets of foundations paper. Okay. Cause look at, you would have wiped all this off on paper towels, my friends, and you would have thrown it in the garbage. And how sad would that have been? That would have been a sad, sad oops, <laughs> sad, sad day. I think he's getting a little excited. Okay. So I'm going to pick this up, right? I'm, I'm going to get crazy. So I am going to put a foundations paper on the bottom for whatever was left on that mat. I am going to, I'm dripping it on my pants. I am dripping it on my pants. I am going to do this. And I'm going to put that down. And now I'm going to sandwich another piece of foundations on top. Oh, I dripped it on the floor. I dripped it on the floor too. Look at <laughs> now it does look like CSI. Um, and I'm going to put some around here like this a little bit too, because we can, why not? I can do whatever I want, right? Because I'm just cleaning my palette knife off right on the background. 
Now, because this isn't watercolor paper, uh, it is foundations, but um, it is a little less porous. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna brayer it. So just make sure you're floating it around in water or you'll just have like kind of stagnant lines. Let's see what happens now, are you ready? Here we go. We're getting three generations out of just what was dirty on our mat. And I'm gonna brayer it. Why are you brayering it, Vicki? Just for the pressure. I wanna push that pigment and the water into this paper like a sandwich. And then we're gonna see what we get. Now, the one thing, you wouldn't go away and call your friend and say, hey, you should see the art I'm making. You want to pull this apart so you don't actually glue the mediums and your stencil all together. And then you're like, oh, Vicky doesn't know what she's talking about. What a mess I made. I was excited and she ruined everything. So I'm also going to make sure the one underneath gets brayered. Okay. You ready? Let's see what we get. Here goes the reveal. Oh my goodness, friends. Seriously. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. And it's one layer. We could add other stuff on top, right? So that is the top sandwich. Let's see what, what's going to happen when we lift that dirty stencil that we don't have to. Oh, so it pressed even more pigment in there. And if we want, why can't we do this? We can do whatever we want, right? that second or 20th impression so we have that now and what you guys aren't seeing it's sparkling like a diamond there's diamond water all in that from the iridescent glaze right so if you're a card maker you could totally cut out of this couldn't you if you're a scrapbooker you could totally make a background on this couldn't you or a mat for a photo uh if you like to do art journaling you could totally use this as your background papers so let's see what we got just from our dirty. Oh my goodness. Like seriously, look, can we make it move anymore? I don't think so. I think it's going to be probably pretty stable in here, but we'll try it. Do you, th there are so many techniques friends that when I'm just messing around in my studio that I still have to share with you, like some really fun things I've done in past classes that maybe you weren't a part of and you haven't seen. But look at that. That's just instead of the dirty, it does kind of look like a crime scene, but there's things I could make it better. Because when it's done, there's no reason I couldn't gesso on top of this. There's no reason I couldn't add another color. But let's just kind of clean up and dry and see what we ended up with. Because I'm not sure. Should we make a quick layout? Do you want me to make a quick layout out of one of these backgrounds? Because then I can show you how quickly we can turn this into something. Just let me give this a quick wipe because it's how I roll. Some people don't clean up and that's totally okay. I, on the other hand, have to because that would drive me crazy because it's just who I am. I've got to clean my stuff up. Okay. Quick layout. Yeah, right? Just add another color and it doesn't have to look because red, red is tricky. I know in my magazine days that you can't really, don't send a layout in where you drip red paint on it because a lot of times your submission might not be picked up because it will look like CSI, right? So we don't usually drip red unless it's for Halloween, but not that you can't, you can do whatever you want in your own personal art, right? There. Okay. Vicky feels better because she cleaned up a bit. Hope I didn't wreck my pants in the floor. <laughs> okay. So now this one, I think I would stamp things on and use it to die cut, right? You could use it with your um, silhouette. You could use it with your Cricut. You could use it with your dies. That would be cool. A big title out of it. Or if you're a card maker, you could uh, stamp any flowers on it and add some more pigment. So I'm just making, I'm not using this one tonight. So I will set it aside. We will use this as a base when we go to elevate at our next step. So I can show you how I would use my cleanup sheets. 
So, but it's not soaking wet. It's going on the floor. Let's look at what other ones do we have? This one. And it is, can you see the diamond in it? Look at, see the diamond? Oh, I love it. I love it. And thanks friends um, for talking to me. For every single one of you that are out here chatting, I know some, I learned this, that some people don't chat because you might be watching on your TV, right? And, or you don't know how to chat. Um, I love you guys just as much as well. And thank you for joining me. But thank you guys, the ones that talk to me while I'm doing the live, because um, it'd be kind of like weird and awkward to just sit here and talk to myself the whole time. <laughs> so thank you for that. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit more, but this is actually as the moisture leaves and just the pigment and the shine is left behind. Can you see that? Oh, it's so, so pretty. Okay. So I'm going to let that one dry. Is anyone playing along tonight? Or a lot of you just, want, oh, and this one, right? This was another part of, this was the top layer of the sandwich. Totally digging this. Hi from Manitoba. I love your gold paste and use it a lot. Me too, Roxanne. It's one of my favorites. Should we sing along too? I would love that, Sharon. And I would love that when you tell me your family all looks at you like you're weird, right? Because what are you doing? Hi, Robin. There's so much pigment in those pencils. Because think about it. I just blended a couple shavings into my medium, right? It is a great Valentine's paper or whatever you want to use. Because we can love people any time of the year too, right? So anywhere pigment pooled, you will get a lot of sparkle because the um, mica flakes, the little iridescent mica, is in that. So there's not as much on here because remember, we got this from the top. But oh my goodness, loving how that reacted on there. And then let's look at what else we got. Hi, Annette. How are you, my friend? You're playing along. Irene is always playing along. She is always my ride or die, right? Irene, you're always in here doing it. Just watching. It's 2.15 in the UK. Marsha, go to bed. You have to get your beauty sleep, my friend. I love it. Like Marsha said, now the chatting is great that she has friends all over the world. 100% agree with you, right? I'd probably be over here talking to myself all by myself if you guys weren't here because I like to talk. That was my hairdresser um, of, I don't know, 30 years. I think I've been going to see uh, Jerry, my stylist, and I was telling her I was going to these Scandinavian hot spa pools, and she laughed because you can't talk at all. And she's like, oh, that's going to be really hard for you. And I'm like, tell me about it, right? I love this one. I love this one. So see how the paper's buckled? It's just because it's still wet. Now, I will let this completely dry. I won't bake it. But can you see that? So if you remember this one, I had stuff left over on my palette knife. I misted the back of my foundations paper. I put the stencil down and we pulled the medium on wet foundations paper and then we did a second pull and look how pretty that is i absolutely love this one like really love this one thank you marcia uh, we have a lot of fun i'm crazy and people either dig it or they don't and that's the whole magic of the interwebs right if i'm not your cup of tea you have 10 million other people you can watch on, on YouTube until you find the right fit, right? I love the hearts with the sparkle. So I'm trying to dry these so um, I can show you. This was the first one, do you remember? And these are acrylic medium, so I can't heat it too much or it's gonna bubble. So I'm just trying to take a little bit of the moisture out, but I will let these just dry. So this was the one that we went in and stenciled it first, so it is um, shiny. It's a very light sparkle. And then we pulled the first bit of um, tinted iridescent glaze through the stencil. And it's, oh, 
It's so pretty, friends. And if you are new to mixed media and you're like, I don't think I like mixed media. If you've noticed that mixed media means many things. So uh, don't, if you've seen one style of it and you think that's not your thing, well, let me tell you, there's 12 million other ways that you could use it. It's just literally mixing different media or mediums. So I love this because I like lots of white space, right? With my mixed media, it's still, there's clean aspects to it. So look at how this pops. And if you were doing a scrapbook page, you could do a little bit here, a little bit there, some flowers down the middle, a couple of mats, some embellishments, a title, done and done. You could cut this smaller and mat it on a piece of pink cardstock. You could sew on it. You just have to let it completely dry. If you're a card maker, what a beautiful background. What a look at this could be your whole card with like a layered die cut uh, sentiment done and done put a couple of uh, drips of paint on there and that is a beautiful card that is like love you friend thinking of you or happy valentine's you just cut right out of the middle what you need or some strips of it and sew it on a card background right so it's so easy it is not hard have faith right it's a lot of people are like you say that but i don't think i could do what you do yeah you could yeah, you could. Hello, Don. How are you? We are making texture paste with the Distress Watercolor Crayons and Shavings. This is with Vicky's Iridescent Glaze and Candied Apple. Isn't it pretty? So it's totally sparkly. We used uh, Mr. Holtz Distress Texture Paste. And look at, so it's a matte finish of texture paste just using the shavings from the crayons. And then this was the one I did tonight. Let's make a layout. Want to make a layout? Let's do it. I think it's dry enough, right? I am going to, like, look at, sometimes I got to resist. I was going to go and do another layer on here. Let's keep it simple tonight. Can I, I'm going to put the camera up, or are we okay if I keep it here? Let's make, like, a quick layout. It is right now 920. Do we think that um, I could make a layout in like 20 minutes? I think I can. Let's see. So we're going to use Print Shop. I haven't even opened it yet. So this is my new collection with American Crafts. I'm going to cut this off. This is going to be the base of my page. Okay. Base of my page. I'm going to cut the top off. So if you're not a scrapbooker, make a card. Well, if you're not a scrapbooker, I'd love to change your mind sometime because I love doing it. I love memory keeping. Um, my favorite way to do it is actually in six by eight. I do 12 by 12 for the masses, but for me, it's the six by eight albums I teach. I absolutely love that, right? Let's do it. 20 or 40, what's the difference? I know. We know what how crazy I am, right? But let's see. Let's pick, pull out the papers. So let's pull out some print shop papers. Print shop. Look how pretty it's going to be with that color. I did think I had that far. I did think I had that far. And I picked colors that will go with the collection. Maybe we'll use a stamp too. Let's see. Let's do something quick. Look at his split. Barba trick. Um, let's pick some titles. I'm under the table right now, friends. So if you're like, why'd the sound go away? That's why. Okay. Here's just some stuff. I love scrapbooking. It's where I started. I do make cards as well. If you guys have followed along, I really, I just do all the things, just make it all, do all of the things because crafting brings me so much joy seriously does i love all sorts of paper crafting i like the idea of sewing <laughs> the idea of it i would love to learn how to quilt i would do all of the things so i gotta clean up just a little bit because it's who i am so let's get the messy stuff out of the way because now it's paper crafting time Okay, there we go. So 
do you not agree that peeled paint is a perfect pigment color for this lovely collection? Peeled paint, perfect with print shop. So with print shop, this is paper collection. If you're new here, this is my baby. So this is, see, that's me, Vicki Booten. That's me. So it is with American Crafts. This is my latest collection. I also have a Christmas collection out right now, but look how pretty it is. So if you're new here, I'm going to use this tonight. So you have lots of different choices. Let's pick, oh, look at that. That could work really beautifully. So I'm going to make a layout tonight that I am going to then turn around and put photos. Ooh, love that too. Look at that paper kind of goes with the stencil, doesn't it? Uh, make a layout tonight. And then I'm going to take a photo this weekend of my girls weekend in landscape. So I'm going to make sure it's in landscape and I'm going to add it to this, to this layout. I'm going to use that one too. And we are going to do something really, really quick. Maybe this one too. Okay. That looks good. I, I picked out a couple patterns. Is there a stripe in here? This is not everything. This is just some of the paper because there are 24 double-sided <laughs> pieces. Um, will this be sold at Joann's? It will not. They do not pick up every collection because they do not reset. So I don't, I say it will not, but it might. Um, I would think it's not going to be in Joanne, but my new collection, I believe that's coming out in the spring will be, I believe. I would love a quilt in all these papers, Deb. That would be the best day if they came out with fabric that matched, right? I'm grabbing some more because there's more paper. I'm under the table again. Oh, I have some six by eights too. Let's look. Let's look. Is there anything I want to use in here? Ooh, look at that one. Oh, love it. And the scissors. Let's use maybe that one. Look at, we could do that. That'd be fast, wouldn't it? Just use that as my base. Do you remember I told you I organized everything? And then literally in three seconds, I made a mess and it's not organized anymore. I love this collection. I really do. Hi, Jamie. How are you? We just made texture paste out of the, see this background? Totally made out of the new uh, watercolor pencils that fun so I was going to use this side but I'm really thinking the scissors so let's I'm going to do the fastest layout right and I think are you guys okay that it's only going to be a one photo layout it's just a four by six is going to go here so I am really loving this salmony orangey color so I'm going to cut a piece out that's going to be my one of my mats for my photos You know, it's funny that uh, I've heard from a couple people that they're like, oh, print shop is my favorite. And I laugh because they're the same people that every time I come out with a new collection, they're like, that one was my favorite. So I am glad I'm not alone because I say the same thing. So that was a four and a half by a six and a half so that it is oversized mat and I can put a four by six photo in the, oh, I love this already. Look at that, super simple, right? Super simple. And this back side of this paper is kind of awesome sauce. So look at, that is left over. I'm totally cutting that out. I'm gonna fussy cut. Or as I tell my friends, fussy cuss, cause that's, they cuss me out every time I make them cut anything out of paper. It, the palette you think is different for me, but it is my fall palette. I always end up going with earthier tones in the fall because I can't rainbow and butterfly it every time, right? Well, I could, but I'm not gonna. So look at, I'm gonna cut this out as a label. 
that was just on the back side of the salmony color paper so this is all just off the cuff friends there's no sketch no plan so it could turn out beautifully it could look like poo poo but i'm totally okay with that because it still will be another page done in my album my imaginary album that i'm going to start actually putting pages in look a little labeler right and i don't know how or where i'm going to use this yet but you get what i'm saying oh i like that so let's make it a little smaller You love this one, Irene? I do too. I knew, I knew, I knew when we were doing it that this was going to be a good one. You know, like I knew. I'm like, people are going to like this one. I think it's going to be popular. So I'm going to put that there, maybe, right now. Oh, maybe I'm a liar. Like that better there. Quiets that down, pulls the color in. Let's look at our embellishments. I was going to stamp on this possibly, but I don't think I need to. So I only pulled out the flower embellishments. So let's go with that. Where did that come from? It's the back of Assemble. Assemble. Assemble is the one that's all different little strips. And that paper was the bottom piece that I cut out of the bottom of the paper. Look at this. Love that. Oh, let me show you something that is brand new for my collection that we're going to throw one on this paper because I love them. If I can find it, I might have got you excited for nothing because maybe it's not down here. Maybe I don't have them down here, but I should. Second. Oh, Vicki, you got everybody excited. Oh, yep, yeah, they're here. So this is the papery collection. This pack has 200 pieces in it. It's actually, you get this in, if you signed up for my class and you're getting the kit, this whole pack is in the kit. Remember I told you I put way too much product in this kit and you're getting way more than what you pay for. So I know some people will look at it and go, ooh, that's kind of pricey. Just price it out all on your own. Go into scrapbook.com or a different website and put everything in your cart that I've added into that kit and let me know what the total comes to. I'm curious, because I'm crazy. So this papery is a whole bunch of like stickers and ephemera. So look at that. These are little vellum, yes, vellum stickers. That's a sticker. So look at, it's totally going there see if there's anything else I want to use in here kaleidoscope picture maybe I'll put that there oh look it's already coming together tying the black in I love it so I'm gonna just layer it there and let's find my title it, seriously look at what you get in this oh So this is something, so you'll laugh. So my next collection that is done and it's coming out in the spring, this was not in it. And last minute I said to my designer, I'm like, I know you've been working really hard and it's last minute, but can we add it into the next one too? Because I love it so much that I think that people um, would love this. You know, it's a great add-on and great for art journaling. <gasps> so good. So, um, you're welcome early. It's going to be good. Okay. Ephemera packs. Always have two of my collections. This one, I always want more bits, like titles and flowers and leaves. So this whole set this time is just flowers and leaves. And look at the scale of the ephemera. It isn't tiny, tiny little pieces. It's great for scrapbooking. I've not seen a link for the heart stencil. I believe it's one of it's one of mine. It is uh, one of the print shop stencils. So there's two different sets. There's a set that's all circles. And then there's another set that is the hearts, a chevron. And I can't remember what the third thing is. So look at great ephemera pieces. Oh, I love this because it's going to be a fall day photo. I am making the girls that I'm going with. They don't know it yet, <laughs> but I'm making them do a photo shoot with me. 
I would like to do a fall photo shoot. I love this already. Let's look at a title. So the other thing that comes with all my collections are four different title embellishments. This is in my handwriting. This one's called Perfect Day. And it has, this was a perfect day. Oh my goodness, wouldn't that be good? I don't know it'll fit though. So perfect day. Could we use that, couldn't we? Hello from Costa Rica. How are you, my friend? So look at, <gasps> perfect. We like that, don't we? So what I like to do, because I'm not committing yet to like kind of lay it all out. So I'm just going to cut that out. I'm going to put perfect and then I'll decide if I want day from here or if I want day. And did you ever notice I fill every single section of my stickers and uh, my title stuff with dots. And so you don't need another um, embellishment pack. You have embellishment right built in. And remember what I tell you guys is I, I never trust adhesive on anything. So I will often put a little bit of wet glue down on any kind of sticker, thicker chipboard. I love it. Perfect. It's perfect. I'm looking on the screen. Yeah, it totally pops, right? Now, look at this almost looks like, uh, what do you call that? Like almost ransom note-ish, right? So these were hand designed and they're gold foil. Won't that be perfect? I could put day from these. What do you think? Perfect day. Let's look. Maybe this one. D A Y. Perfect day. D A Y. See? But I'm going to put this on something. D A Y. Which Y do I want to use? I'm going to use all. Oh, this is a fun one. Look at that one. <gasps> I would have a whole alpha set just in that pattern. I have to remember that because I will tell my Melissa that I like that. Okay. So I am going to, that's an A, find something in that pack I just put away. That's how an A go. Oh, look at Vicky put it upside down. What a dork. perfect day. And I'm going to go back into this. So we're not pulling a whole bunch of different SKUs out. And let's find some kind of little label thing. So I know my card makers are probably looking at this and going, okay, now I'm tapping out because it's not my jam. But you could use a lot of the design that I'm using for a card too, right? So what can we use? Oh, too big. Too big. There's so much good stuff in here. So much, so much good stuff. Oh, happy day. And these are all vellum stickers. They're vellum-ish. Not, I don't know. They're kind of clear. Would you call it vellum? Oh, I like that too. Maybe. I don't know yet. I don't know if there's going to be something in here for me to use, but I'm going to try. I'm going to see. I could always cut a piece of this down too. So I like this. I'm just going to cut a piece of this off for day so it doesn't get lost in the background. So I think about one and three quarters will work. And it's going to go underneath like this. And I'm going to start committing with glue. How close am I? I don't know. I think I'm going to be over my 20 minute allotment, but I think I'm close. That pack is the papery pack. That's what it looks like. Papery pack. 200 pieces, Jamie. 200. Okay, let's start gluing some stuff down. I've got glue, my tape runner, and of course, if you've met me before, I need some kind of pop. Right. Let's move it all. Okay. So this came out of the six by eight. 
paper pad, the scissors. So I just use that as my base, right? Doop, doop. And I'm going to glue that right there. It looks perfect. I don't even care if it's super straight. Doesn't even matter. And I like to make sure I can still slide things under if I want. So I just kind of adhere in the center of the paper. It's going to be in a page protector anyway, right? So I think that looks straight-ish. This is my mat that is four and a half by six and a half. And that will work beautifully for the photo I'm going to take this weekend, right? Did I? Yeah. Move it over a little bit. I would like to leave, I don't know, about an inch and a half on the left-hand side. I'm going to just put one tack in the middle because I'm going to totally pop up the corners of that um, this page. Okay. And same with this. See, from the same paper. Just cut it out of the scrap. And it's going to go underneath like that. Love it. Totally kind of tying in with the greens. And I'm going to find a sticker to go on there because that's always my finishing. So let's start doing a little pop dot. I will totally pop up just edges because then your page doesn't get too bulky, right? Instead of popping everything up, if you only pop up corners and maybe you don't like bulk in your album, then this helps a little bit, right? It will not be as bulky. And I like to just do the edges. And to start, I don't even take the backing off. I'm just kind of laying out my pattern. And I can go from there. So we already know that perfect. And this little water dobby dabby thing is going to go here. This ties in the pinks, peachy pinks, salmony colors in there. And I have a blue. I don't even know if this is how I did it before. But for right now, it kind of gives me an idea. Turn that out because I like the shape of the flower like that. And then we decided, well, I decided, and you guys are just going along with it. I like that. Tie some of the black in, right? Little visual triangle because then I'll make sure I put some black here, my black title, the black there. It's awesome. And then perfect. But I want to move that so there's not so much of that. It's simpler like that. Perfect. And then remember, we have day. And I don't want it to get lost on here. So I'm going to squeeze this underneath just to give it a little bit of weight. So when I put my day down, it doesn't get lost in the white. Okay. So I'm going to add some of this in a minute. But let's glue this down. And a little bit more. These are very thin out of the papery, like it's very thin paper. So if you love to decoupage, they would be beautiful. Let's stick this guy down. So now it will be tricky to get the backing off because these stickers are so thin. So just know it before you do it. Don't get mad at me. Maybe tweezers will help. Vicky has artificial fingernails. So I am going to swear at it. But let's see. I'll figure it out here. Just give me a minute. It's just not going to be a fast minute because I can't get my fingernail in between the backing. Any tricks, friends, with really thin stickers? There, I did it. I did it. So do you see what they look like? They're very delicate, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take the whole thing off. I'm going to stick it down and then remove the rest of the backing. So we knew we wanted this kind of dot down at the bottom, right? So let's start doing that. Let's lay it out and then wherever it, it falls. Okay. There. I moved it a little bit, but I'm totally okay with that. Okay. Look at that. I love it. And then perfect. 
and these are pretty sticky but like i said don't trust sometimes the adhesive on these things is not the best so i won't do it tonight but i will go in with my uh, gina k glue and i will put glue on the back of these i just do not trust that the stick is going to stay sticky okay so look at perfect stick them right now but it doesn't mean it will stay sticky that's what i'm saying right doesn't mean it'll stay sticky perfect day so i'm gonna put those right like that i'm gonna pop up the a with a foam dot pop up the a with a foam dot because you know i like to kind of make it bajiggity that one's gonna go there I'm going to put the D right down there, and then the A popped up. And like I said, friends, this was like no plan. I just kind of threw this one together. Just threw it together. And I liked this kaleidoscope picture, so I'm going to put that on here. Do you guys still like that? I like that, right? Kaleidoscope pictures. And we'll pop this blue one. is going to get popped up. Popped up. I like to turn and curl because you wouldn't just find a leaf with a flower. This is not a leaf, Vicki. This is a flower. Wouldn't just be flat, right? So I like to give it a little bit of movement. I might pop that one up a bit too. Like that. And, choo -choo. and then I'm going to put my kaleidoscope pictures down again. See how quickly Vicky can remove the backing. I'm putting it flat on the table and kind of curling it a bit. There's got to be a trick. And when you guys discover it, I think maybe tweezers. Oh, look, it's not too bad. It's not for as thin as these are. It worked. Okay. Now I'm being pretty brave because I am totally putting this on a textured background, but. We'll see. Hopefully it'll stay. I could totally sew through it if I wanted to, but I like that. Tying my blacks in. And now let's find something to go up here. Are we okay that it just says perfect day? I could put ah. Right now I'm just going to leave it. And we'll find something to go on here. Let's look at the stickers. So look at, I love this collection. So much thought went into every single aspect of it, right? So look at attitude is everything would be perfect up there. Um, they put this on so you don't choke yourself with a bag, but you can't see what's behind it. But I could put this black frame on and we'll layer something else on top. Pokey tool, yes, and red liner tape. So smart, Marsha. Look at, I think this would be pretty. Let's see. It might not be. Oh, I love it. Do you see your visual triangle? Doop, doop, doop. We're going with it. I love it. And now we'll find something that layers right there. Let's commit my flowers. So really, see friends, if you're like, okay, I'm, I'm watching tonight because I saw Vicki talking on Instagram or I saw that she was live. It's the first time I've been here. Didn't even know who Vicki Booten was. Think she's funny. Might check her out again. I'm actually putting that on top. I'm not going to tuck it behind. Um, and then you just kind of hung out because it was interesting. But you're like, I don't do mixed media. Look how quick this was. This didn't take a long time. If you weren't doing all the talking that I do, you could have whipped off like what? Seven backgrounds I think we made. Um, and then use them for a scrapbooking page. Like that was really quick, right? Yeah, don't put plastic bags over your head. Good thing for that warning in three languages, right, Don? Warning, plastic bags can be dangerous. Don't suffocate yourself with it. And if you can get your head inside of that, wow. But I'm sure it's more for kids, right? Kids would kids would do that um what do we want to put on top of that i want chipboard i could still do attitude is everything let's see with pop dots right 
look at oh i love that friends and now all of my friends for this picture that i'm going to take this weekend because some of you are probably like why is she why isn't there a picture before she started the layout like that's freaking me out what is she doing here well this was all kind of impromptu right but i already know now that we're going to be taking a fall picture the colors will totally go with this or i can make the photo black and white right what collection am I using? Diana, it's my collection. It's Print Shop from American Crafts. Print Shop by Vicki Booten. That's me, Print Shop. Okay. It, it, this is the first layout I have made. Are you ready? I'm going to cry with my Print Shop collection. You guys join me tonight for the first uh, project made. I have been working so much. I have not even been able to use my own collection yet. So i am so excited there you go friends look attitude is everything perfect day i am going out with my friends this weekend i'm totally going to put a four by six photo on here and i will share it i will post this on instagram and on the interwebs you could also to finish this off um Let's do it. I'm going to put a couple black dots and that'll freak some of you out that I'm going to put it after everything's on here. Oh, or you could look, you could use some of the gold dots if that freaks you out, but I'm going to use some black. What do we want to use? Acrylic paint. Let's do acrylic paint. Let's do acrylic paint because it will be good and opaque. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to use some acrylic paint. You can use ink if you want. I want it to be very um, black. So look at I have my stamping block right here. How much do I need? Hardly anything. One little. Oh, that's a lot. You don't need that much. I'm going to wipe some of that off. That's way too much. See that? Don't do it. So let's take like still too much because it is acrylic and it's very opaque and we don't need that much and then let's blend some water in it paintbrush see i buy this kind of stuff for what i'm going to show you next week see my little spoon and i'm going to show you how i can mix magic with it it's a magic spoon so of course i do not have a cup of water like i always do and all my misters are empty but we can do the thing so i'm just wet my brush blending out my paint oh see it's already ready to go do you see that look see how much paint i needed hardly anything so i'm going to do this oh i love it now i want one to be bigger I'll just do that and it kind of ties in here right love it right it just tied a little bit of that because it's just that green was just sitting there with nothing going on just putting that little bit of black finished it off so let me flip the camera and we can chat for a second seriously like so much magic was made tonight whoop i'm moving i gotta move it so here i've moved it Hi, I hope you enjoyed that. That was so much fun. I can't lift the layout and show you because black paint drops, but hopefully look at when I change the light, you can see, can you see the sparkle in that? 
So the whole thing that started tonight off was expanding your products. I took my sweater off. Did you notice? Because I got hot. Um, we invest in those awesome Distress Watercolor crayons, pencils, Distress Watercolor pencils. Remember, Vicky has a brain fart and keeps saying the wrong thing. And you can use them exactly as they were intended to just come out of your box and they're water soluble and you can watercolor paint, you can color in stamps and all that. And we talked about a lot of those things last week on Friday Night Live. So I will link last week's video so you can see part of uh, the first part. And now second part was I was going to go in a whole different direction tonight and then magic happened and I'm like, okay, I'm going to push that off till next week. And tonight let's make our own tinted custom texture paints or paste to match our distress ink so it's just another way to use the watercolor distress pencils to create tinted texture paste so oh it was so good right hi simon i love simon hurley so we have the matte edition with peeled paint and uh Rangers, uh, distress, distress texture paste. And then Vicky came to the party and we use iridescent glaze, which you could use Simon's glazes. You must have one with no pigment, right? Simon, is there one that's just iridescent? So you could mix the glazes with that or pardon me, the shavings with that. And then we also went and did like, look at, look at this piece of paper towel we made tonight. Oh my goodness, it's seriously beautiful. So yes, the uh, heart the heart stencil is in print shop. It is not in the kit. I think the circles are in the kit. So it is the add-on, not yet, maybe 2023. That's good because all of my pace have gone away. And I told you, Simon, I'm going to get all of yours so that I can start using them and seeing how they work um, because I love my mixed media. And I think we need a whole Simon Hurley day as well. So that is going to be in um, in in the lineup. So I hope you enjoyed that. I am sad that I won't see you tomorrow on our normal Friday night, but I hope tonight made up for it. If you're new here, welcome to the club. We have so much fun. If you haven't already, make sure that you have subscribed, that you have hit that like thumbs up button. Leave a comment in the regular comment section because I might not see it in the live if I missed a question or anything uh, you'd like to help me with. And thank you for letting me create my first layout using my new collection with American Crafts Print Shop. I love it. It is one of my favorites. If you love navies and peach and greens and uh, pretty golds, you'll love this collection. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to pack. I'm off on a girl's weekend. Wish me luck. I have to wear a toque and get my hair wet in the Scandinavian, what did I tell you? Something, spa, pools. Got to put a bathing suit on. Uh, but it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a great time. And um, I'll share pictures and I will let you guys know. If you haven't already, make sure you've joined the Vicky Booten Creative Community group page as well on Facebook because we do lots of chatting and sharing there. So, oh my goodness. Have the most amazing weekend, my friends, and I will be back next Friday with the magic thing that I created using the shavings. So I did watercolor, but I took it to a whole new level. So make sure you join in next week and we're going to share some fun things. So as always, thank you so much, friends. Thank you, Natalie, my sidekick, for all the links and answering your questions if I miss them. Have a fabulous weekend, friends. Share what you make. I would love to see it. Just tag me uh, on any of the platforms you're sharing. And I will see you next Friday. Bye, guys. Thanks so much.